Hello everybody. Um, this video is going to be talking about one important point that um, some people might might uh, be stuck in, um, like like this case. So the the before I tell you what I'm going to do, I just tell I want to tell you the problem. So uh, here you'd see this is. Um, let's take it from the beginning. This is the McKeith Thiele diagram. I have already talked about it in a previous video in this series. And we saw that this is the 45 degree line, top section, bottom section line, the Q line, and this is the equilibrium curve. This is the, the, the curved one. And the equilibrium curve, in this case, we used the, um, the relative volatility uh, with, this, with the, this relation to calculate the, uh, or to plot the equilibrium curve. Um, and using this relation, you would see that, that there is the alpha, which is the relative volatility, which is the vapor pressure, uh, vapor pressure of the more volatile component divided by the vapor pressure of the less volatile components. Uh, and, and we use this uh, to get the relation between y and x. And, and this, this is okay, assuming that the alpha is constant for all the mole fractions um, that we are, we are using, starting from 0 up to 1. And this is right for some cases. However, for non-ideal cases, we do not have this um, this case. Uh, you see here that it's it's easy equation to use. You can have y as a function of x and x as a function of y. And this enabled us to do uh, all the calculations to calculate the number of stages. And also, you'd see that the curve is symmetric, um, and and that's why it's easy to work with. Um, however, in, in other cases, like this case, this is the, I think it's water ethanol or methanol system, you'd see that the curve is, is, is not symmetric. In, in the uh, small mole fractions, the low values of x, you'd see that for small x, you have a large y, it's 0.1, and y is 0.78 almost, or 76. Um, and you have this gray jump and then the curve starts to flatten and then at the end of the curve you would see when x is close to 1 the x equals almost y um, it's 0 0.95 it's y is 0 0.96 and that, the y, that's why the curve is kind of getting very very close to the 45 degrees line um, and this is uh, a case that uh, I, I have to find if, if I want to repeat what I did here with the, the the experimental data then I need to find an equation like this that satisfies or that fits well with the data that I have here and this here comes the problem if you try to fit the data what you're gonna do is to add trend line and from the trend line you would uh, ask it to display the equation and the R squared um, and you'd see, of course, it's not linear relation. If you want to make it um, logarithmic, it's not going to work because there is zero here and you cannot have log zero. Uh, polynomial, if you have it uh, second order, it's not, it's not a good fit. It's third order, it's not a good fit. When even even if you increase the, the order of the polynomial, you'll find that it, the R square is getting high, but it is not passing through the points. You cannot, you cannot draw the equilibrium curve this way. So... Um, even the polynomial is not is not gonna work. Um, so um, you wouldn't find any equation. You can find some other software that have more advanced features of of data fitting, like MATLAB. I tried this, but it didn't work. Um, I tried to come up with my equation or any equation that I think would fit with this data, and I didn't find anything. There might be an equation that I don't know of, but uh, I I had to find a way to. Uh, to get an equation that works uh, or fits well with the data that we have here. Uh, so what I ended up doing is that I found um, an, another solution, which is an easy solution, and, and I, I think it's an effective solution also. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take uh, some copies of this, um, of this thing here, of the plot, um, because I'm going to use them. So uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I, I just looked at the curve and found that this part looks like it, 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 it looks like it's I can find a good fit to these three or four points. And I can have a good fit to these uh, like six, seven, eight points. And I can find a good fit to this uh, part separately. So what I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to break this curve into three parts. So it's like you're playing with a Lego. Uh, you cannot make something that fits with them all. You can make each part by itself and then 
assemble them so what I did is that I uh, it, it took me some time of course I first tried to break it into two parts and and make the fitting for each part of them separately it didn't give good results so I decided to go for three parts so um, it took me some trial and errors so the best thing or the best results I got were uh, having it from 0 to 0 0.05 this is the first part the second part from 0 0.05 um, down to 0.3 and the third part was starting from 0.3 down to 1 okay and what I'm gonna do is to do the fitting for the three curves each one separately um, and what you're gonna do here is a trend line and make it polynomial of course you can try others but what I found that polynomial is is the best uh, my best bet so um, the second order polynomial is is great um, it's working here very nicely you have goodness of fit of 99.96 which is which is perfect um, you can do the th the same thing here I'll display the equation the R square values and make it second order second order is, 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 is not it's not bad but it's not it's not very good so the third order polynomial was was perfect it's 99.98 almost a uh, point eight and then one last trend line for the last part make it polynomial third order I'll display the equation and the r square is almost 99.92 so it's perfect so what I'm gonna do now is to make a function that consists of the three of them with an if conditional so I'm, I'm gonna tell the function if the x is smaller than 0.05 or smaller than or equal to 0.05 you will go for the first equation if it is between 0.05 and 0.3 you will use this equation if it is greater than 0.3 up to 1 then you would go for the third equation and that's all what you are gonna do um, um, it's, it's kind of simple but it is um, very effective actually so what I'm gonna do is just write an if condition and say that if x is smaller than or equal 0 0.05 then you would go for negative 297.62 multiplied by x power 2 minus 27.525 multiplied by x um, plus 5.9125 oops I think I missed something this is Oh, oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking here. I, I just looked here by mistake. I'm sorry. So it's twenty-seven point um, two nine six multiplied by x plus point oh oh twenty eight. So this is the first part of it. And if not, then I would go for a uh, two is smaller than or equal to point oh three. Um, then I'd go for the second equation which is 42.252 multiplied by x power 3 um, minus 27.525 multiplied by x power 2 I'm, I'm now looking at this equation plus 5.9125 multiplied by x plus 0.3929 and then if um, it is smaller than or equal to 1 then I would calculate it from the third equation which is 0.8153 multiplied by x so this is the the most boring part of it but you'll, you'll do you do it once and you wouldn't care about it anymore um, 0 1 multiplied by x power 2 plus 0.6552 multiplied by x plus 0.7173 so now the equation is done and we would see how it looks like so what I'm, I'm doing now is I'm gonna add um, another curve here which I would call it y calculated and then the x values here the y values here <coughs> I think I did something wrong these are the x values and these are the y values and um, here it is. So I think I did something wrong. It, it looks good for the second and third parts. The first part is not what I'm expecting. So I think I did something wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm revising the equation. And, and this is good that you'd see the, the, the mistake in what you're doing. So it's negative 297.62 multiplied by x part 2. Oh, it is plus. I did it as minus. So this should solve the problem. Okay. And you'd see here that this is a very, very good fit here. I think there's something not right about the second. 
um, equation as well. Let me just revise it better. It's 42.252 multiplied by x power 3 minus 27.525 multiplied by x power 2 plus 5.9125. 3929. Okay. Anyways, so we can we can uh, make this as um, just to see the difference and make it a solid line, make it a thin line, just to distinguish it e distinguish easily between the two. I would put no markers. Um, okay, so you see that the curve is kind of going very nicely with the data that you have. Um, which which is exactly what I'm I'm trying to do. Um, so um, you can you can even uh, try to get um, like a figure of the of the error that you have. So you can get the difference between these two, and all the differences are uh, at most 0 0.01, which is which is very very acceptable here. You have a small small error. Um, um, so, so I think now you can you can use the the this function here again. You you shouldn't worry about that because this is what um, uh, the the software would use. So you wouldn't do anything by yourself. You're not gonna do any calculation. So you just uh, wrote the equation and dragged it, and it did everything. And I I have already used this equation. You see, it's it's here. I used it. It was it was perfectly um, fine. I used this equation here. If you um, think this is um, like different from what I did before I just wrote the equation once and I didn't do or didn't need to do anything anymore there was just one last point that I want to uh, point out here is that I have some con some uh, constraints here in the fitting that I'm doing which is I must make sure that this point is 0 and 0 and this point is 1 and 1 Otherwise, this this wouldn't work. But I can see here that this is not exactly zero, and this is not exactly one. And I can just do some tweak to the uh, function that I'm using. And you can see here what you have here that tells you that the, this is not uh, going at zero and zero. And this is because it has a constant. So you can simply uh, get rid of that constant, and this would solve the problem um, by deleting this. Um, this part and you'd see that the the equation is is um, it didn't didn't change much and the same here um, you need to have this as one so you need to add 0 0.0023 to the equation so what I'm gonna do is add 23 to this so it's gonna be 96 so when you um, do everything so it's it's um, it's getting z from zero zero to one one so so the equation satisfies these conditions and you see that the equation is not uh, affected much with what you did um, so you can use it with uh, with the Machiavelli diagram and it's gonna do everything exactly like um, it did before the only different difference here just to to tell the, the whole story is that you can here have y as a function of x and x as a function of y because this is um, a simple equation you here can get y as a function of x but you will never be able to get x as a function of y that's why to to do the the stage calculation you need to do some um, um, kind of uh, iterative solution to have the value of uh, y um, uh, or the value of, of x uh, that satisfies the equation at specific y. But this is this is out of the scope of this video, but what I need to, to end up uh, confirming that whatever the equation that you are using, you can, or the data that you have, um, as long as they are, they are uh, like uh, continuous data, um, you can you can find an equation that satisfies the uh, the data well um, and de it depends on what you want to do you can break it into two parts three parts four parts as long as you're getting some good results out of that so i hope it's helpful and i'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye